Welcome back to NJ.com. Jackie Friedman here with the Star Ledger's boys lacrosse expert Mike Kinney. We've made it to the Tournament of Champions semifinals. There are four teams left. Before we get to this round of games, we're going to take a quick look back at Summit's game against Chatham. Summit, our, our top team all year for the mm -hmm. last couple of mm -hmm. years. Yep. And um, I guess you, you were there and got to experience the ups and downs of that yeah. game. Yeah, I wanted to take a quick look at that game since that game lasted about three and a half hours, you know, <laughs> five overtimes. Amazing. Definitely one of the best games I've ever seen in a state championship game. I'm still going to pick Mendham over Ridgewood as my top all time. Three overtimes because that was a complete surprise. Obviously, Summit, not a surprise that they beat Chatham. I guess the surprise was how well Chatham played after that first yeah. game against Summit because that's the only game Chatham was out. That first game against Summit, they were not terribly competitive against them. They turned it around. Tony Calandra, great job of getting his kids prepared. His kids doing a great job of being prepared. What a tremendous game. They tie it up uh, to force overtime. And I'm telling you, Chatham had chances, and I know Chatham knows that. They had chances, and Summit knows. Chatham really could have and probably should have won the game because they really generated better offense than, than Summit did in the overtime. Sure. We got to the fifth overtime. Sonny Round finally got the ball. <laughs> Nick Kilkowski set a screen for him, and he went hard and, you know, a little lefty on a wrap to the, to the right post and, and got it done. Summit was a little lucky to get away with that, but I'll tell you what was a fantastic game. Both teams, the crowd was excellent. It was that's at, that's lacrosse at its best. And hats off to Chatham for coming back and playing that tough. And of course, hats off to Summit. Summit knows how to win these games. Well, Summit's prize at this point is to get Del Barton. Who Summit, you know, we've talked all year. They're on their 67 game winning streak. Mm -hmm. Del Barton was the last team to have beaten them. April 1st, 2009 is the last time this team lost. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Man, exactly and, uh, right. They meet, the, both semifinals are Wednesday at Kane. This yes. is the 7 o'clock one. Yes, the late game, right. The last team to beat them, they want to be the, 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 the <laughs> last team for Summit. They, they, they want to start a new streak, let Summit start it next year. They're very, Del Barton right now is, is playing with great confidence, and they're playing with great authority. What I love what Del Barton is doing right now is defensively, they're playing excellent. And it's not just Jack Bright, who's the leader of this team, the anchor of this team. It's Spencer Houston. It's some of their younger guys really playing well. They're, they're, their positioning is terrific. They're playing very intelligently. They're forcing bad shots. They're really playing old-time Del Barton lacrosse where they're holding people to three and four goals in a set of offense, maybe even less in a set of offense. Offensively, you don't know the difference between the midfield and the attack right now, and that's when Del Barton's at their best. Quick passing, a lot of movement off ball. Clay, Har Clay Harmon, Anthony Heaton, all these guys, it, it almost doesn't matter who has the ball on the stick. He's going to be dangerous as a passer right now. He's going to be dangerous as a scorer. This is Del Barton, again, at its best. They weren't at their best when they played Summit the first time this year. Right. They were a little off skew, they, and, and, and they allowed Summit's zone defense to dictate tempo. They didn't dictate tempo. Right now, Del Barton is back to playing excellent lacrosse right now. I even said to Spencer Houston, maybe they're the most underappreciated team this year, Del Barton. They began at number two in my original top 20, but I haven't talked about them this mu that much this year because of Summit Street. Kind because of just done what they had to do. Exactly. And Immaculata, the way they came on, and Glen Ridge, you know, great job to okay. Group 1. I haven't talked about Del Barton very much. They're they're ready to play. And you mentioned the, the score of that first game, April 30th, Summit won 9-5. to five, so. Summit won 9-5, to five and, su and, and Summit went out to a 6-2 lead in the first half. They dominated the first half. Here's one thing interesting. Second half, Del Barton played much better in the second half. I, even, I think I even made a note in my game story that they did a better job of attacking that zone. They came up with some, some new wrinkles. And I think someone's going to have to have some wrinkles in, in their zone defense in order to handle Del Barton, because I think Del Barton right now has some answers. And the, the important thing is they feel they believe they have some answers. And that may be all they need to attack this successfully. And if Del Barton gets a lead, they're back to all-time Del Barton where they can possess the ball, possess the ball. Summit can too, of course. You know, if Summit gets that lead, Sonny, Sonny Round and Nick Kilkowski and Mike Ford and those guys are tremendous. And they're, and they're playing selfless lacrosse. So let's not forget how good Summit is. But we, they, they have to be very wary of the changes that Del Barton have made off that game. When you lose that game like that, sometimes that you're, it's easier to play that second game than the team sure. that won, no matter how how big your winning streak is, right? Exactly. Then, of course, that's the second game at Kane. The first one is the 5 o'clock one between Immaculata and Bridgewater Raritan. They've split this year. Yep. April 20th, Immaculata won 9-8. May 19th, Bridgewater won, won 14-6 for the Somerset County yep. title. Yeah. What's Here's one problem I have. I think the Lax Power rating system is very good, and I think it's very solid, and it ends up being pretty accurate. The problem I have is this. Immaculata and Bridgewater were almost neck and neck. It was like one one-hundredth of a point difference, 
Immaculata got the bye because they were the second seed as a result of that. Bridgewater had the third bye. Now, okay, Bridgewater, nobody's going to cry for Bridgewater because they played home in that first round game at Barcelona Field. They felt very good, and they looked like a home team that was very confident. They handled Moorestown fairly easily. But when they were that close, there has to be some other thing in their lax power rating that says, okay, these teams play twice. Bridgewater won the last game. They won the last game decisively. Let's go with a point differential and look at that. And it's simply Bridgewater would have been the number two seed. Exactly. Bridgewater deserved the number two seed over Immaculata. I love Immaculata and what they've done this year, but Bridgewater deserved the two seed and the bye. But you know what? We Immacul have the same two three game. We would have the same two three game. We would have exactly right. Only Br Bridgewater's got to wear their away jerseys now. And you know what? Now the way Bridgewater played against Morristown, Immaculata may be wishing they played that game and didn't let Bridgewater to get Keep greased up on that game because sure. their momentum is unbelievable right now. Bridgewater right now, they are a year ahead of where I thought they'd be. If you look at my, my original top 20, preseason top 20, three of the teams that were in there were my top four. Mountain Lakes was the only team in that top four that didn't make it to this level. Bridgewater was number nine. And remember, my number, four, my group four pick was Montgomery. Right. Montgomery. And we knew right. it was going to be a crapshoot. <laughs> yes. And we knew group four was going to be a crapshoot because I thought Bridgewater was about a year away. They have great junior scores. Ryan Hollingsworth is going to be an outstanding All-State kind of kid. Scotty Beda, he's a junior. May, Ray Mastrani, who's a, 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 a midfielder, he's a junior. They have a bunch of junior guys who are really coming on a year more uh, faster than I thought they were. And the reason is. M.G. Hollingsworth, who's Ryan's dad, he was an outstanding player at Bridgewater and Rutgers. He had these guys when they were younger, very good attackmen, one of the better attackmen Bridgewater's ever had. He taught these guys as they were younger. Now, Bridgewater also has two very good offensive coaches, Matty Appel, who's coached Chuck Appel's son, and Alan Cordilla, who is one of my favorite midfielders of all time at Bridgewater. And these guys have taught these guys a year in advance to really their confidence. Bridgewater right now has an excellent offense that Immaculata has to stop. We love that, Brett, that Immaculata defense with Kevin Albert and John Pillon and, you know, Taylor Vanderbeek, both sides of the ball, and Ralph D'Agostino, probably the best player in the state. But Bridgewater right now, the way they're playing offense, dangerous to stop. They're really good. Well, we got semifinals Wednesday. Finals are uh, Saturday at uh, Yersack Field at Yersack Rutgers. Field Rutgers, and, 3 o'clock. Uh, it'll be exciting to see what happens. So keep coming back to NBA.com and the Please. Star Ledger throughout the week. He's Mike Kinney. I'm Jackie Friedman. We'll see you next time.